30 days ago, SpaceX had a complete monopoly on all U.S. Space Force military payloads heading to orbit. The only other competitor that SpaceX had, United Launch Alliance, did not have a new rocket certified to carry military payloads. Rather, they were making use of their few remaining Atlas V rockets to carry the few contracts they had left, but Vulcan Centaur had not yet been certified and there was some question as to whether or not that certification was going to take place without another test flight. And aside from ULA and SpaceX, there was nobody else approved to compete for military payloads in the American launch arena. And of course, foreign launch providers can't launch military satellites at all. So for the most part, SpaceX was enjoying a complete monopoly on lucrative military contracts tracks rocketing this company if you forgive the pun ahead of the competition to a degree that some observers thought was insurmountable but in the last 30 days everything has changed not only does ula have a certified new launch vehicle but also rocket lab has been approved to launch military payloads together with blue origin we're going to talk about all of these new developments right now Two days ago, the U.S. Space Force certified United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur rocket to launch national security missions. The news has now doubled the number of national security space launch providers in a single stroke, and ULA has obviously joined SpaceX in this select group. Quote, Assured access to space is a core function of the Space Force and a critical element of national security, according to Brigadier General Kristen Panzenhagen, the Space Force's Program Executive Officer for Assured Access to Space. She went on to say, quote, a Vulcan certification adds launch capacity, resiliency, and flexibility needed by our nation's most critical space-based systems. ULA has been working to certify the Vulcan Centaur for NSSL missions since 2016 when the company signed an agreement to this effect with the U.S. Air Force. Vulcan was still in the development phase at this time. It was ULA's powerful workhorse rocket of the future, the replacement, of course, for the company's Atlas V. The Atlas V actually debuted way back in 2002 and conducted many national security launches for the U.S. government over the years and flew its final NSSL mission last July and was expected to retire later this decade. Vulcan debuted in January of 2024, successfully sending the private Peregrine moon lander aloft, but Peregrine, of course, failed to reach the moon, had some problems almost immediately after separation, and then the rocket launched again in October, and then that's where the problem started. Vulcan achieved all of its orbital objectives. However, it suffered a problem with one of its solid rocket boosters. An engine nozzle was destroyed as the result of some sort of explosion caused by a manufacturing defect, which has supposedly been addressed at this point, according to ULA President and CEO Tori Bruno. The Space Force is apparently satisfied with the corrective actions taken and with Vulcan Centaur's prospects going forward as it has given the rocket the green light to carry national security payloads. The process was a lengthy and rigorous one, according to military officials officials. Quote, Vulcan certification is the culmination of several years of effort by the Space Force and ULA, which encompassed 52 certification criteria, including more than 180 discrete tasks, two certification flight demonstrations, 60 payload interface requirement verifications, 18 subsystem design and test reviews, and 114 hardware and software audits, all to establish 
established a technical baseline from which the Space Force will make future flight worthiness determinations for launch, according to Space Force officials. And Tori Bruno added the following, quote, We are proud to have launched 100 national security space missions and are honored to continue serving the nation with our new Vulcan rocket. We thank the Space Force for their collaboration and confidence, and we are honored to support our national security needs for many years to come. Vulcan Centaur has capabilities that are matched only by Falcon Heavy as far as SpaceX is concerned because its heavy lift capability makes it only one of two American-built rockets capable of delivering heavy military satellites directly to a geosynchronous orbit. Falcon 9 does not quite have that capability. Only Falcon Heavy can deliver heavy payloads up to geosynchronous orbit as opposed to a geosynchronous transfer orbit which utilizes the satellite's capabilities to eventually get up to a geosynchronous orbital status and the Space Force is not satisfied with that most of the time. They want their satellites delivered directly to geosynchronous orbit and only Vulcan and Falcon Heavy are currently capable of doing that. And then just a few hours ago another major development took place in competitive space flight at least as far as military payloads are concerned. Because Rocket Lab's Neutron has a first launch scheduled for the second half of this year, the company met the program's eligibility requirements to be selected to compete for the NSSL program, and upon a successful flight on Neutron, will be eligible to further compete for individual task orders awarded within the NSSL. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that Neutron is certified to carry military payloads or anything, but it is a very important step forward for this company in terms of eventually securing military contracts under NSSL Lane 1 requirements. According to those requirements, a diversified, competitive, and reliable domestic launch base is needed to provide launch services for its highest priority national security missions. And obviously, they want competition and not monopolies, and Rocket Lab has now been allowed to enter into this club. The program plans to award a minimum of 30 missions within its contracting period through 2029, with the potential for an extension through 2034. As part of the on-ramp to the NSSL program, Rocket Lab receives a $5 million task order to perform a capabilities assessment that demonstrates the company's tailored approach to mission assurance for launches awarded through the NSSL. SL program. According to Rocket Lab founder and CEO Sir Peter Beck, quote, supporting assured access to space for the nation's most important missions has always been the goal with our Neutron rocket, and we're incredibly proud to be selected by the U.S. Space Force to demonstrate this commitment for the NSSL. Neutron is a powerful new launch option that will set a new standard for performance, affordability, and reliability in a medium launch launch, and its selection to the program demonstrates a high degree of confidence by the Department of Defense in Neutron's capabilities ahead of its first launch date later this year. We can't wait to showcase Neutron as the important platform it will become for the Department of Defense. And yeah, I would say that that's actually an appropriate statement to be made in regards to securing something like this. Obviously, the military has had an opportunity to look into to Neutron's current development, and they seem to believe that an estimated launch date in the second half of this year by the Neutron rocket is no exaggeration coming from Peter Beck. That being the case, Rocket Lab, United Launch Alliance, and of course, Blue Origin and its new Glenn rocket, which has clearly demonstrated that it is also capable of delivering payloads to high Earth orbit, well, Things are about to change in the world of competitive spaceflight, and I think very much for the better. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also thank you to Kino and Mushmouth Morton, my latest Patreon supporters. Thanks so much for helping out with my channel. I wouldn't be able to do this without you folks, and also I hope you enjoy these 16 exclusive videos in the Patreon library 
library with a new one being added next week. And finally, I'm about to leave for Colorado Springs next week to attend Space Symposium. I have about 60% of that flight paid for. If that's something you would like to support so I can bring you exclusive and unique content from the Space Symposium, well, all the details are in the description. Thanks again for watching, and as always, stay angry about space.